Think back to your school days, standing in front of a locker, spinning that dial back and forth, hoping you remembered the right numbers. Or maybe you've struggled with a small lock on a suitcase, rolling the tiny wheels until the digits line up. These little devices are so common in everyday life that we barely think about them. In this video, we'll break down how a combination lock actually works, why the steps are so specific, and why this centuries-old design is still around today. The answer turns out to be more fascinating than you might expect. Right here on History of Simple Things. Combination locks are everywhere because they solve a basic problem, how to secure something without relying on a key. With a regular padlock, security depends on possession. You either have the key or you don't. With a combination lock, it's about knowledge. If you know the correct numbers and sequence, you can get in. If you don't, you're out. It sounds simple. But to make that idea work mechanically requires a neat little arrangement of wheels, cams, and notches that respond to your hand on the dial or your fingers on the wheels. At the heart of every combination, lock is the same principle, alignment. Inside the lock, there are several wheels stacked together, and each of these wheels has a notch cut into it. These notches are called gates. Sitting above the wheels is a thin bar known as the fence. The fence is always trying to drop downward because it's spring-loaded, but most of the time it's blocked by the solid edge of the wheels. Only when all the gates line up in the right position does the fence find a clear path to fall. And when it drops, it pulls back a bolt inside the lock. That's the moment you hear the satisfying click and the shackle pops open. So how do those wheels actually move? That depends on whether you're dealing with a traditional dial lock or a rotating wheel lock. In a dial lock, the kind you'd see on a gym locker, the dial is connected to something called a drive cam. This cam acts like a messenger. As you spin the dial, the cam spins too, and it has a small pin that bumps into the first wheel. That wheel has its own little tab to catch the second wheel which then moves the third, and so on. This is why the process of opening one of these locks feels so ritualistic. Spin several turns to the right to clear everything, stop on your first number, rotate left past it once before stopping on the second, then go right again to the last. The whole point of that dance is to ensure each wheel is picked up and placed carefully, one by one, until all the gates line up. In a smaller rotating wheel lock, like the ones you use on luggage, the same principle applies, but in a more compact form. Instead of one dial controlling multiple wheels, you're physically turning each wheel yourself. Each digit is etched onto its own wheel, and when you spin it to the right spot, you're lining up its gate with the others. When every digit is correct, all the gates are in position and the locking bar is free to move. It's the same system, just scaled down for portability. One of the most common questions people have about these locks is why the opening sequence is so strict. Why can't you just spin directly to the numbers? The answer is precision. Inside, those wheels don't all move together at once. When you first spin the dial around several times, you're essentially resetting the system so the drive cam only has hold of the first wheel. Then, when you reverse direction, the cam pin lets go of that first wheel while grabbing the next one. Each direction change is about transferring control from one wheel to the next. By the time you finish, Every wheel is carefully parked at its proper position. This careful sequencing also explains why a lock with three wheels has thousands of possible combinations. Each wheel has 10 digits, and those multiply together into a very large number of possible settings. 
Add a fourth wheel and suddenly you're dealing with tens of thousands of possibilities. That's what gives these locks their effectiveness. Even though the actual mechanism inside is simple, the number of possible outcomes makes guessing the correct code by brute force very impractical. Still, for everyday purposes, combination locks are practical and secure enough. Their strength lies in convenience. No keys to lose, nothing to copy, nothing jingling in your pocket. The only real risk is forgetting the numbers, which, let's be honest, has probably happened to most of us at some point. But that's part of the trade-off. The lock depends on your memory rather than a physical key. It's easy to assume combination locks are a modern invention, but they actually have a long history. The concept of using rotating disks to align openings goes back as far as ancient Rome. Archaeologists have found examples of Roman locks that use similar ideas of alignment and notches to secure valuables. Over time, these designs evolved and became more precise with industrial manufacturing. By the 19th and 20th centuries, mass-produced combination locks became common in schools, banks, and homes. And despite all the changes in materials and styles, the underlying principle has stayed largely the same. Line up the gates, drop the fence, release the bolt. Combination locks are a great example of how everyday objects hide smart engineering in plain sight. They don't rely on electronics or advanced technology. They rely on mechanical precision and clever sequencing. And even though digital keypads and smart locks are becoming more popular today, those electronic systems are built on the same idea. Input a code, check it against the correct sequence, and unlock if it matches. The difference is that instead of wheels and notches, the digital versions use circuits and software. But the concept, security through knowledge of the right code, remains the same. What makes combination locks especially interesting is how they shift the responsibility of security. With a key, safety depends on physical possession. With a combination, it depends on memory. That's why it feels a little more personal when you open one. You're not just holding an object, you're holding a piece of information that makes the mechanism respond. Combination locks are proof that even small, everyday items can carry ingenious design. They've been around for centuries, they're still widely used today, and they probably will be for many years to come. Because at the end of the day, they provide a simple promise. If you know the code, you get in. If you don't, you stay out. And sometimes, the simplest ideas turn out to be the most reliable. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.